Alluvium Showcase is coming back. God, it's been way too long. It's been way too long. I missed all of you so much. I'm sorry we were gone. I'm sorry Grant and I were gone. We were too busy winning awards. Award-winning video games that haven't even been released yet. Here it is. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Andrew Wall here, host and executive producer at Alluvium. And I'm joined, as always, by the king of leaks, the leak master himself, co-founder of Alluvium, Grant Warwick in the house. What's up, buddy? Welcome back to the show. We've got so many leaks to show everybody. How you doing, buddy? Don't show me that award ever again. <laughs> Don't show me that award ever again. Best, <laughs> best lore. I wish my acceptance speech would have been on the live stream. I told, I Is apologized to Aaron and I said, I know you tried to keep the lore a secret, but we won an award <laughs> for it anyway. Hey, the Gamer's Choice Awards. That's gotta be a troll. <laughs> That's got to be a troll. Oh, well. oh my God. <laughs> All right, let's tell everybody what they're in store for today on, on Alluvium Showcase. This is the show where you get behind the scenes on everything going on at Alluvium, all the assets being created, and today's show is going to be unbelievable. We're going to show you never-before-seen avatars, in-game cards, alluvials, merchandise, overworld, and yes, you see it right here, rocks on this episode, friends. And of course, we've got a live demo that's going to be done by Grant Warwick today. He's got over here, he's streaming his Unreal Engine 5 for us. We're going to go through all our video leaks and image leaks first, then we're going to go into Unreal Engine, live in development from Grant, and show that to you in the second half of Alluvium Showcase. So it's going to be totally insane. Grant, you ready to do this, buddy? <laughs> so ask me that in two and a half hours when we're done. Two and a half hours, good God. <laughs> I don't know if I can last that long. All right, we're gonna go through the video leaks first Woo! and get straight into some really cool cards. These are actually some of my favorite leaks from the episode. Let's show mm. this first card here and tell us where yeah. this card will appear and what sort of context we, we can expect to see this. So obviously the NFTs are like the Pokemon cards in our game. And we have a very tricky problem to solve where in our game, we need the NFTs to look like this. You know, we need context. What's their affinity? What is their stats? And all of that has to be displayed in game. And then we have the actual NFT stored on the marketplace. Say if someone were to take that Kaka NFT and sell it on OpenSea, take it off of the Alluvidex and sell it elsewhere, you would then just have the raw artwork. And so what you're seeing is how the NFTs will appear in game, which was always going to be a square format. But all of the NFTs in their raw format just it's just raw art right it's just a 4k 3840 by 2160 30 frames per second ultra high quality clean render of each character but then in our in our universe which kind of gives it a little bit more pull to keep it in the Illuvidex, you can see all of the additional stats that are updated live like how many battles it's won how it's leveling up over time so to me, this is there, so premium actual... instead of mm -hmm. having so many video games have a still image oh, representing yeah. the card. And sometimes they have some kind of moving background where there's fire or particles or something like that. Right. Like mm -hmm. a hearthstone or other card games. Ours are just full blown, beautiful 3D renders of the characters showing their personality and moving about. Uh, and that to me takes this to a whole nother level that takes it to the alluvium level of quality we're mm. looking to achieve and also you can't forget that in the game right now when you're selecting your characters in the deck when you hover over them if you set it in the graphic settings on hover they will animate so as you're scrolling through your deck say you stop and pause on kakarap he'll be animated so ah oh, it's so Stoic it's Ember stuck. Links. Look, look at just that look at it. Look, look at directly that. at it. This is going to look be in it. the video game. <laughs> it looks so beautiful, <laughs> Keep man. Keep looking at it. <laughs> it's so oh good. My look, God, the hair, like the the way the hair moves, oh. is just amazing. It. Mar <laughs> Maria and Yannick are 
<laughs> they've gone Super Saiyan on this. We said, like, when Yannick first came onto this project ages ago, we shared in game hair cards from the stage one links mm -hmm. and the thylacine and it was just like people knew like holy shit this doesn't happen in games and now here we are a year and a half later and they've done nearly a hundred fur characters to a pixar level like the uh, this the, those are the types of movies yannick and maria worked on and so we're getting just literal world-class fur and hair cards for our game and I've said it a million times, no game has done this before, this amount of high quality fur work. And when Aaron said that we needed to do all of those lynxes, I don't think he realized that he wasn't saving us time. He was actually <laughs> making the game take maybe from longer. Maybe from a design standpoint, doing these. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. you guys know what we're talking about. There's a bunch of variations of these lynx alluvials, including like this water one we're about to show here. And each one has unique attributes and, you know, has a somewhat, definitely a distinctive look, but they're clearly similar, right? So from a design standpoint, it may have saved some time, but I imagine all that hair <laughs> and the coloration and making them distinct from each other at a glance had to have taken a lot of time on the creative team's behalf. They've, each NFT has gone through just... 50, 100 iterations. We render it, change it, render it, change it. The one part, anything can go wrong when things are this high fidelity, you have to change it. So if there's five hair strands on the main intersecting the eyeball or something like that, it has to go back to groom. It has to, that's why we got that super crazy render farm that I was sharing on Instagram because these frames take a lot of render power. And some of these you're seeing a preview quality Right, we haven't rendered all of these out at 4K yet, mm -hmm. but it's we're getting there. You know, that's the push we're making right now for open beta. We've obviously got the private beta that's next, where we introduce the next two regions. But for open beta, we need the NFTs to be done, or at least the artwork to be done. There may still be passive VFX added or sounds added to them, but essentially the artwork needs to be there because that's what pulls people into wanting those cards. Agreed. And uh, I just love, like, to me, you know how in Harry Potter, the it was a sort of a novel idea for the paintings to come to life. Uh, and maybe you had never seen something like that mm. before. For me, this it's like that with cards in video games when I see these. It, the paintings have come to life. And I think after the game, millions of gamers, tens of millions of gamers see the card not just being somewhat animated or partially treated, they're going to now expect the cards that they collect in video games to be fully realized like this. And I think this is gonna set a new industry standard. I agree, I think it is beautiful as well. And also get this, right? So eventually, and this has been a gargantuan amount of work to render these out, but once you've got the scene set up, all of the animations that the animation department have done are easily imported into these scenes so say for the signature animation where the card in the game you'll notice if you played private beta you capture the character it does a signature animation on mm -hmm. the card and then like woo like pops up on screen right yes the nft like spins towards you and then bang you've got your nft we yes. will render the signature animation in these scenes so that oh. won't happen just in v-ray uh, sorry that won't happen just in unreal engine and then you'll see these characters come to life in those signatures where here they're a little bit more boring. They're designed to loop, but that's the next phase afterwards. So it's things like that take us out of a open beta to a final game. Understood. So it's always, it's like, just when the audience thinks this is the level of quality you're going to get with Alluvium. No, it's actually going to be even better than that. You are, you are psycho, Grant, and the team is psycho, and I love it. Like, you're always blowing me away, and I get to see everything internally uh, with where we're taking this. This is so cool. We, I mean, man, we wanted this to be more than just a game, right? Like, we wanted to be able to do, if we wanted to, right? Like, have interoperable assets. You can make movies out of them. You can make a Netflix series out of them. These are the assets that we would use if we were to do a cinematic, if we wanted to do cutscenes with these characters there's no reason if a character becomes super popular to the users 
the animators can't go in, animate a cool cutscene of two characters interacting. We've got the scenes now ready to roll, right? All of that hard work was front loaded, which was just a stupid amount of front loaded work to get the characters sorted. But once they are, we've got 10 years of being able to utilize these assets for anything we want. Agreed. God, I think I Crystal, Laura. I think Crystal the Wall has it right. This is more than a game. It's a new universe. That's that's exactly what Grant was just saying just now. He the team is building these assets to be used not just in the video game, the arena game or the overworld game or what have you, to be used in our universe moving forward. And a universe mm. includes more than just games. It includes shows, comic books, uh, you know, shorts, marketing, games different interfaces, dashboards, mobile apps, VR, AR, like all of these mm -hmm. formats are possible with Alluvium because we're creating these assets in a way that can be used across multiple formats. That's forward thinking. I love it. And gosh, let's take a look can at we, the, just these full screen previews. Just yeah. give you just a sense of, just a real sense of the character. It's not everything has sound yet. So you obviously got to realize we're sharing work in progress here, right? So even there's no passive VFX on these. We have a layer, Nico wanted to go in now for each of these and add a unique sound signature for their affinity and class. Mm -hmm. So if it's a water bulwark, it has its own signature sound that plays. And we're just trying to solve that right now without adding too much work, but it's just an ambient background track to the cards that just give it another layer. So some Audio of them on have top. That. Very Some cool. Some have that here. I don't think these are the ones Dimitri has been working on. The, the last these did weeks. not have audio. I checked mm. all of these ones. These did not have audio in baked into the yes. renders. Yep. But in a future episode of Showcase, let's show the ones with audio so people can get more of a sense. I mean, even God, that's so nuts. Even the cards are going to be immersive. <laughs> like what? That's that's so cool, man. I love that. People are asking oh. about hollows or holos. A hollows, I guess, is how we've been pronouncing it. Grant. When are you going to show, show more of that hollow animation that is so breathtaking? So we're showing in this leak what the hollows and dark hollows will potentially look like in the game. But for the NFTs, we won't show that, right? Open beta will go live and you will see the hollows in the open beta. Aaron wanted to hold the lore back. I wanted to hold back what the hollows look like. Now we have shared a couple of work in progress shots Mm -hmm. of what it could look like to excite people but we're not just going to get on showcases and start sharing that stuff as we go so i think and i think that's important because to me that's what pulls people in for the long term for aaron it was the law right like don't reveal the law because if you give people that by the time the game's out they aren't going to care about it so you can give away breadcrumbs which we've done but Hollows will be absolutely outrageous. No one's touching them. I said in that interview back a year and a half ago, no other shading artist in the world would ever be able to replicate what we have done visually to make mm -hmm. those. And Dimitri and I put our soul into that. We have been tweaking and optimizing and improving that shader, which is <clears throat> the most complex shader ever created by any human being on earth. That's wild. Fact, fact. like I can guarantee that. Right. I've seen it all. I used to be a shading artist, right? There's, no one is touching that. And so that's our ace up our sleeve for making Alluvium unique. And I just think people are going to freak the hell out when they get the hollows and dark hollows happening. Indeed. Very cool. And earlier I showed this, uh, this particular animation mm. with the camera moving about. What are we showing? What is the progression on this alluvial that we're showing here? This is the stage to Carablue. Mm -hmm. And it's just the walk cycle Alex has been working on for this guy, because obviously we've got a bunch of characters that haven't been implemented in the game yet. And characters like the Caribou, people haven't really seen those yet. And we are now like, you know, week by week, we get closer and closer. Right now, if I go into the Alluvium game, we've got seven new character lines implemented of a total of 21 new characters that are playable in the game now very close to being finished and the caribou the the panda uh they're some of the last to go in but we've got this yeah we can keep rolling we can keep getting through there's so many leaks in this episode you got it no problem uh so here's a turtle comparison so 
what what are we showing here? I I, I know in previous episodes, you want to yep. keep the models simple and clean and clean them up is a lot of the task. Is that what this is showing? We're showing the work Julian has done, who's one of the sculptors on our team, doing things like muscle and skin simulation for the NFT artwork. So every single NFT, we want to bring the life out in them, right? So when you're seeing those 4K loopable NFTs, you're staring at them for ages, right? And when you start to stare at stuff for ages, you'll start to just, it's human nature, pick apart things that don't look real. And so things like if the neck, if the throat is breathing and the throat skin isn't going up and down or the muscle in the arm isn't slightly jiggling the right way, you'll pick up on that and they look static and they don't look real and lifelike. So for all the NFTs, we do a tech art pass where mm -hmm. he will literally frame by frame sculpt in skin movement and muscle jiggle. And for some of them, it's very subtle, but it helps, right? Like, you know, at the, at the level we're going to, it helps. That's so nuts. Every That's character so cool. has to have this. Oh, look at this Komodo dragon. This is the We've NFT the art, render. right? I, I think I did send you the render of this. Maybe it went in. I've late, got a stage but... two as well. Look, I'm guys, I'm only sharing half of the leaks uh, Grant gave me today. He gave me, I think, 170. I could only fit 90 in this episode. Ah. So I'm sorry. I know Grant, Grant said, can we just go hard 90 minutes and show all the leaks? I'm like, we'll just do half of them today. So... You, there's probably more oh. Komodo dragon in the in the on the books for next week. Fucking um, thumbs downs in the chat there. Well, oh, come on, man. A lot of fans. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, you shut up. Four hour leak show. <laughs> it's all good. The audience likes jiggle physics, but the Komodo dragon S one. This is the NFT art, and then we also have the stage two here, and this is, I guess, this is the one more commonly known as Snoop Dogg alluvial. I mean, look at those eyes. This is crunk. Crunk, huh? Okay. It's Hetty, Crunk, and Blotto. Okay, those are the names. Let it be so. Just animation for the idols that we're doing work on. Makes sense. And then we They're have the this, uh, I believe this was, was this one, is this Axodon? Yes, this is Axodon. This one you can see a little bit more clearly, like you see in the throat, if you look at the throat, see when he breathes, so there's kind of like a sag in the neck and stuff like that. Got it. Like it's the, making the, it more the, more believable yeah. and lifelike. That's cool. Yeah. More more cinematic. More like the creatures you'd see in movies. Let's say that need to be more oh. detailed, or or you lose it. You lose so, the immersion. Okay, I've said that like this is Pixar quality and things like that. That's not like a hundred percent true, right? Because if we were to make a Pixar movie, the low topology wireframe would be much more optimized for offline rendering. Like it'd be much more high res. Our low res topology is for games. So when it comes to tech art passes and muscle sim and stuff like that, we can't go as psychotic, but that would be easy to update at a later point if we needed to, right? But I don't think we do, right? Like my idea was always, we could even make a show or a movie in Unreal Engine if we really needed to. Like the assets are good enough to make, I mean, look at the, I mean, Pokemon, the art in the, series wasn't exactly that great right like i mean the story was great but yeah you don't need pixar level cgi to tell the story of alluvia no i mean you just need good character design and, yes. and then good story yeah. along with the character design that's what pokemon has done so well now this is a grass square what, what are we trying to show with this grass I, I i didn't get it well this is where we're at with all of the regions right you start getting ah. down into the literal minute details like uh, grass and fat flower blades and things like that so each of those assets needs to be created and when we first started it's very hard to invest the time and energy into doing that when we had like you know you saw the showcase episodes we had hundreds and hundreds of plants to do now we have heaps of these subtle assets to do you know so we're getting down like there's no more big assets really being developed we're getting down into moss fibers vine hanging from things little rock decals and stuff like that. So all of that stuff is what makes a triple A game triple A and the set dressing artists like Vanya, Salvatore and Emil go through the world, just adding that touch of detail. So if you've got a abyssal basin plant and it's not looking very sat into the world, you can mask certain parts with moss and things like this hanging. 
Got it. So these this is sort of like uh, getting toward the finish line and finishing yeah, touches absolutely. on a lot of these. Yeah. Got it. I we, I we wanted to finish line mm -hmm. with assets. That's that's so exciting. I wanted to do a sneak preview of something we're going to show next week. Don't say too much yet, Grant. What the hell are these crazy bubbles? Don't tell them what it is. Oh. I'm just going to show. We're in their next episode. We're gonna, <laughs> Grant will tell you what these crazy bubbles are. But I've got like another 30 videos we're going to show you in the next episode, everybody. Don't worry. What are the bubbles? Grant, don't tell them. I want to tell them. <laughs> don't tell them. We have to give them something to look forward to in the next episode. All right. We're going to take a quick break to show you a leak that uh, my team made. You loaded this up in the folder you wanted to show everybody. It was our Louvitar's date reveal video. Mm. I'm going to play this one really quick. These are, just so you guys understand our process in making these videos, we used some of the scenes that you're going to see in this video across multiple promotions for Iluvatars, and I, as the producer, go remix these assets for advertisements, for data announcements, for explainer videos, and what have you. So this is the one leak I can say I worked on. All of the rest is the rest of the super geniuses. I'll play this real quick. It's about a minute, and we'll come back and take a look at all the image leaks. Then, the live demo right after that. See you in just a moment. It's a team effort on those videos. Andy Kang is the super genius that edits them. Nico helps us do the sound. Florian and the art team do the art. It's a team effort. Go to alluvium.io slash alluvatars and register for the most mind-bending avatar profile picture NFT project of all time. You think the level of quality we bring to video games is impressive? Wait till you see the level of quality of these alluvatars. We're actually going to show some of them in this episode in terms of visual leaks. Now, really quick, before we move forward, I want to make sure it's clear to everybody as I'm showing some of this stuff that nothing we're talking about today is financial advice. I know that you guys are geniuses for tuning back into this show, and you're following the best projects and the most cutting-edge technology out there. And, of course, you're here for Grant because he's so ridiculously good-looking. We are really, really bad at finances. I mean, take a look at this meme right here. Our crypto balances look like this, bro. Our total returns down 50%. Our Venmo account is only got $17 in it. We don't even know how to use a crypto wallet over here. So this is not financial advice. That's the point of sharing that. All right, Grant. Thank you for sharing that meme, Grant. I like it. Um, now let's get no, into some... I'm of an investor myself. I'm so... <laughs> It's such a good meme, right? All right, we've got a couple <laughs> memes here in the image leaks to share with everybody, and this one was fun. Um, I just like this one. I could just watch it over and over again. Look at the joy on her face. Just goes boop. It's perfect. <laughs> it's so hard to find the the random meme content in our Discord now. Even I get lost trying to find it, but every time I do, I'm glad that it takes me like a month because they build up, and you can just scan through laughing at how dumb they are <laughs> that's awesome and uh, here's another one that i shared with grant on twitter um with somebody replying to grant saying my pc runs alluvium great but when i open fortnite it crashes lol very good <laughs> this I is all of it. your leaks this one right here is probably my favorite leak of the mm. episode everybody wants to know when 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 can they boop their credit card and whatever to buy this what is it grant hit us with hit us with that info it looks CG, but actually it's a 3D print that Andre has been working on. So I've got the three. So we've obviously been very busy, right? So when we bought the 3D printer stuff in preparation for doing statues and things like that, I have shared some of that stuff. 
but we just got too busy, right? Like the game has to come first over things like merchandise, but things like this, Andre has been doing himself, right? Like we don't ask, he's got a 3D printer himself. And, you know, as the, you know, when you're sculpting these characters, you want to see them brought to life. So this is real, right? This is a photograph of a statue. And eventually as part of the merchandise store, you will be able to buy alluvial statues. You can see that this is Apon and the tail is just not connected right now. Like, see, there's like a little nodule for it to clip onto. There's, well, there's another, um, there's, yeah, there's another leak here where the tail is clipped yeah. on here. And then mm -hmm. is this just paint on top or is this some yes. sort of metallic finish? Or it's just paint. Yeah, it's just paint, right? And we, we need to find someone. Once we, eventually we will get to the point, right? Where like we, we obviously we've, massively reduced our scope in terms of hiring and expansion because of runway, but we're still planning this stuff, right? So once we get runway sorted, hopefully through Aluvatars, we get back on the growth train and start prepping for things. These are the types of things that the community really wants, plushies, statues, clothing. Clothing is still 100% rolling, but I mean, I would love to have stuff like this scattered around my desk. So oh, it, it's a franchise, you know? We, we said from the start, it's not just a game. It is a universe and it is a franchise and you have to be able to tackle everything to successfully hit everyone in the mainstream market. That Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if you look at franchises like Pokemon, they make the majority of their money actually in merchandise and that actually funds all the video games you like to play with Pokemon. So merchandising is very important. Here's our favorite Snoop Dogg alluvial. Is this, are these just stills from the uh, previews we saw earlier? Yeah, yeah. So these are work in progress, right? I've been working on the Komodo Dragon line and some of them aren't completed yet because obviously as soon as we set up the scenes and materials for lighting, we start to notice problems with animation, textures. You can see the in the game it looks fine, but in the render here, his claws like his hands look glowing, but it doesn't really make sense. Like it's not very clean. So we have to go back, but I just thought I would share work in progress because I love this character. Like, it's such a cool character. You can see the difference. Your audio is getting a little muddled there, Grant. Uh, I, I don't know if it's just me. Uh, what about now? That's better. Yeah. You, uh, we just missed the last two sentences you said, if you don't mind saying this one more time, I heard you saying, we needed to work on the claws. It doesn't oh, make sense. Right. They're glowing the, so damn much. And then we didn't hear what yeah. you said after that. On the stage three, right? Like it's, it's very easy to miss things in the game, but when you render them out in V-Ray, things start to poke out at you because you're like, you're zooming in right now. You can see literally every single flaw or mistake in texture. And it just means that we go through that work in progress before rendering animation out. And that's where we're at. Got it. Japan Carbon is feeling this character. Look, I, I hear you, bro. I hear you. The level of detail is phenomenal mm. on these characters. I mean, it's just it's just mind bending. And I love the way that we stage them <laughs> with the clean reflective yeah. floor yeah. and then with yeah. the color uh, coordinated background. It's so beautiful. Look at the level of detail on this. Have you guys ever seen this level of detail on a massive inventory and collection of characters in a game before? For launch, this is not the expansion. This is not the DLC. This is what we're going to be launching with, guys. We have already promised open beta in 2023. We're going to be moving into private beta 3 with Arena soon. It just keeps rolling. Tens of thousands of people are playing our games and giving us feedback. It just keeps moving forward. Look at the detail in this flower, man. Mm. Get out of here. No passive VFX either, right? Like all the little things that bring it to life. I'm pretty sure we've got this one animated now. Just you kind of um, cuckered us on the amount of leaks this week. So <laughs> some of those. Oh, come on, dude. It, <laughs> <laughs> it was just a logistics thing. It takes me. It took me five hours to load good. all the leaks into my it's editor. So Give, cut me a break. It's, all it's right. so good. Is this water links or is this a different one? Yeah, this is air. Air. OK, I'm sorry. The color God, is the different. Links. It's like, yeah. Hey, how do we make the coolest animal on earth lions even cooler and just take it to another level? By giving them uh, laser eyes, obviously. Uh, so nice design <laughs> choice, everybody. <laughs> oh, no, just Give like, them blue, just... color, color, I... color uh, colorful claws. 
Coming to a store near you. Air Lynx Claws. So, like, the amount of work into this collection, I cannot wait until all of them are there. 205 to complete the entire deck with the mystery alluvial that hasn't been revealed. All affinities, all classes in one. Look at that face. And notice the design variations. The previous one um, had a, uh, did not, oop. Obviously the colors are distinctive, but the hair is also distinctive with each of these designs. Mm -hmm. It's a I mean, it's, it's gotta be difficult to make these different at a glance outside of the coloring, right? Now, obviously this water oh, one has dripping water on, on their face and mm -hmm. that, that's gotta be tough if you line them all up uh, next to it's each other. I know you did that in a previous episode. Yeah, Ma Maria and Yannick are just like Terminators, right? The amount of work they've had to do to bring this to life but it's never been done before. And that's the thing that excites me about it. You can't compare it to anything because it hasn't been done. So when we've got our collection of characters, you know, can you imagine being, let's just say Alluvium does pop off, right? When we do become the next modern Pokemon, can you imagine someone coming along in the future and saying, we have to outdo this? I mean, they, they, they would they would be able to potentially, if they have like a six, seven year timeline and they have their 500 plus person studio using kind of legacy techniques and going through that process, then sure, they could develop an, an, a new intellectual property and they could go to this level of detail, but that would put them five, six years behind us. That's if they got start point, If right? they got started like, today. You'd so, just be like, what the hell? Like, how? Like, I mean, what's the point? Even if we do it, there's no guarantee we don't just become a clone of what Alluvium has done. So, well, I think that's what's going to end up happening is uh, I, I think I, I think we're going to end up showing that this is the successful model, create mm -hmm. a compelling intellectual property where people aren't in on this because, because of investment or finance first. They're in on this because they love the characters, mm -hmm. because they love the universe, because they want to play the games, because they want to have the experiences. And that's the actual secret. Like, it's not that hard. You need to make a yeah, compelling like universe and a compelling intellectual property, or no one will give a shit about what you're doing. And that's so it. It's like the, the website design, right? I wasn't even following that type of stuff because Florian and the web team just do such a good job on that type of stuff. So I just focus on the game. But when they updated the homepage, one of the first comments I saw was, oh, it's so good that they took out all the references apart from the essential stuff to blockchain and stuff like that. And that's like, from the very start, what I was saying, like, no one cares, right? Like, it's not hating on our backend blockchain development, but like mainstream gamers don't give a shit. Like, they're not going to want to go on a Web3 gaming site and just see all this crap related to crypto. It's just got to be a game. I agree. So close. I totally, I mean, look at every successful intellectual property. Like people didn't play League of Legends because of the free to play model. Like they didn't get in because of free to play model. They got in because it was a com the best game in a genre mm. with a compelling intellectual property. Like it's, it's a really simple equation for success. My goodness, what, just for Eddie. folks that are not familiar, which, this is Komodo Dragon, right? Stage, Stage one. one. Eddie. Yeah. I'm sorry, did I say Komodo Dragon? Yeah, Komodo Dragon Stage 1, his name is yeah. Hedy. Hedy is the name. Thank you. Hedy. I need yeah. to. And if you know the reference, you know the reference. If you know, you know. Mm -hmm. God, look at even the eyes, like, man, the reflection on the They're eyes. Not They're not They're done. Not done. Okay, no. so there's going to be a greater <laughs> level of detail. Eyes are being redone. So, yeah, they don't feel real. You can't see into the... Mm -hmm. You know, it's it, it doesn't have depth to it, right? That will soon be he he's got the biggest eyes Oops. in the game relative to his size, so they're going to be spectacular. Maybe I, I I don't know what will be shared in this episode, but obviously there were some leaks of like the eye work in progress and stuff like that. So there are uh, there were some eyeballs in in one of the baskets. Look, even look at this like algae or mold on the back too. This level yeah. of detail, the shrooms popping off. This is the it's just <laughs> such a wild wild mm. character design just the green energy coursing through the veins but it's uh, it's just so good it's so good who is this cutie that is the squiz stage one uh, the church of squiz mm -hmm. 
mystical you see Squiz characters. looking into the heavens here, like just glancing into infinity. <laughs> Oh, far out. He's, he's one of the stage five characters. So he's one of the most powerful characters in the game. He's the only character, I believe, that keeps his affinity the entire way through. So he's shock the entire way through stage one, two, and three. Whereas all other characters either gain a class or an affinity as they go to stage three. So, and I believe stage three squeeze is the only levitating character as well. Every other character stands on the ground, whereas he levitates. Even the details have details, Grant. Perfect. So good. Love it. This is stra yeah, This is my second favorite leak of the episode outside of the uh, outside of the cards that we showed earlier. Look at this nineteen nine. Oopsie. Look at this nineteen ninety style <laughs> chain right here accessory. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I really hope Olivitas goes crazy. You know what I mean? I hope this is what people want in the space because obviously the card game coming out to complement all of the artwork that we've worked on, you know, that Roger has been directing with, with Sophia and Svetlana and Dan. And I mean, they've done so much illustration work. You see all this stuff happening with AI artwork coming through and looking great, but we've done this handmade, tailored, I really hope it pops off. I really hope Aluvatar. I'm three weeks away from Aluvatars, so we'll see how it goes. Aluvatars is not something that when it was originally ideated, I was that excited about because I was thinking to myself, like, the actual NFTs in the game are going to be more popular than mm -hmm. the Aluvatars. But then when you see that, like, the rarity of these and the fact that they're usable in all Alluvium related games, it's more like a long-term thing, getting the rare ones early so that in five years time or whatever, you've got like, you, no one will have that profile picture when you've got millions of players in the ecosystem. Yep, and the collection game is gonna be so mm. fun to fill up that collection, to fill up that book, if you will. I just busted out my old magic cards the other day from when I was a teenager and the feels I had flipping through the pages of that binder were incredible and I have some old, old magic cards. And I think that players that buy these Aluvatars, these early uh, Genesis set Aluvatars, the, the first alpha set, whatever, we're gonna um, settle on with the name, they are going to flip through that collection later on and have a similar feeling. They were, mm -hmm. you were there early, you got the first ones and it's gonna have a unique connection with you. This entire gaming revolution we're on right now. Merchandise art for plushies. Everybody asks when plushies. It's just a work in progress, Grant. How come I don't? How come I don't have the plushie snuggling plushies. with me in bed right now? <laughs> plushies exist right now in a factory in the Netherlands. It's just got to we got to like iterate on them. You know, everything in this game needs to be high quality. So they send it. We send through reference like this. They'll send us back a first work in progress of the plushie. Mm. The head looks wrong and stuff like that. Everything has to get to that alluvium quality and they're coming plushies are coming i believe i did share in the leaks channel one of the first work in progress shots of axon stage yep. two axolotl character and it just didn't look that great right but they are coming which is exciting that is really exciting okay there you go there's your there's your closest you can get to when plushies when they're good and they're ready uh, we're not going to send you something that looks like a knockoff of our own brand all right, so we've got some design leaks that I want to show all of you first. Let's go with the memes. Now, this is particularly relevant. Oh, I mean, I've got, I'm doing a whole Aluva Talks episode tomorrow, Grant, about regulation, uh, getting the opinion of some really smart people. But uh, it's funny. Yeah, the government lets uh, crypto and NFTs pop up. They're like, hmm, copying our homework, are they? Of course. Of course they are. So hopefully we can have a harmonious relationship with governments in this space. But... Anyway, I like that meme. This one's so it's good, man. I, there were so many scammy projects, you know? It, it's like, it's it's hard to be optimistic about it, but that's why we hoped we could be that project. Indeed. Trying to operate with, um, operate ethically and operate uh, and set the standard and setting the standard for making people wait for <laughs> times on the mobile game. <laughs> Like, Alluvium look at this zero. bar and look at this man's <laughs> face right here. Alluvium Zero is causing this level of pain for our players, Grant. 
Are you gonna t are you gonna get on Johnny to fix the fix the um the build times to fix the <laughs> cooldowns? Maybe they get worse. Who knows? You know, <laughs> just worse. for the memes. <laughs> for the memes. I, I love seeing people play Alluvium Zero right now. You know, to see that that's in in alpha state, right? Not even in a beta state. So it it's it really looks cool. so good. It does. It art. looks so good. I could just stare at it. I could just stare at the artwork all day for that. And there were people that got really angry early on. Where is it? Where is it? And I'm so glad we delayed that stuff to make the artwork really good. And also give the developers time to improve as well. Because had we released it, it wouldn't have been balanced. Things would have been breaking way more. You know, Alluvium Zero was a little bit more buggy than the other betas we've released. But I mean, tiny team. And what can you do? Right, it's, it's an alpha, it's not a beta. So that's what we're here for, just trying to get us to the finish line. Makes sense. And for those of you that aren't familiar, all three of our games that we're launching with, all three interoperable blockchain games in our universe are currently being beta tested. So we've got uh, tens of thousands of players playing Alluvium Overworld, playing Alluvium Arena, and now playing Alluvium Zero. And so obviously we need to test all three if they're going to be properly interoperable with each other for the open beta that's happening later this year. So excited about it. Also so excited about this leak. Did this mm. show up at your house? Is this picture from your house or is this like from uh, Roger? Roger. Give, give everybody the, con this yeah. is at Roger's house, got it. Can you give everybody yeah. the context on what this physical merchandise is? So when you get your Aluvatar, you have the option to print it in real life. Right, comes on a really high quality, high resolution, super clean print, and it comes boxed. It, it's it's a product, right? Like if this is if this is something that you settle on, you you want to settle on your profile picture in game. You've acquired all the most rare assets, accessories, and you finally like this is this is what represents my PFP. You have the option to print that out. So, and you can do that for all of them, right? You can build a printed collection. The idea is that on the sides of the boxes, there's an artwork that through each wave being released slowly builds up so that if you stack all of the boxes next to each other, you've got, you can't see that in this screenshot, but it's like That's a cool wild. Oh, keep the box, I see. Keep the box each wave so that eventually you can stack it and you get a cube that Got it. reveals the, the full artwork. It's just a little detail. It doesn't, you don't ah. have to do that, right? But adds to the collectability. Everything we've tried to do is like, we you loved Pokemon. So what makes things collectible? It's little details, right? Yeah. Like you can't just have little, like when you ca catch a character in the game, you're not just getting that. You've also got to then get all of its emojis and taunts. There's the artwork on the side of the box you're talking yes. about, Grant. So basically yeah. you stack 10 of these, let's say, it's not exactly yeah. 10, but let's yeah. say it's 10. Yeah. It'll reveal the final artwork. I mean, mm -hmm. I've seen that with gra uh, comic books and graphic novels that are mm -hmm. a part of a collection. I mean, you've got to collect the whole set. Like, could you just get nine out of 10 and not have it be complete? No, you have to collect the whole damn set. <laughs> the, the universe is broken if you don't. It's so weird seeing this stuff, like photos of stuff in the real world, right? Like it just takes it out of just being a game. Batch They're... one is a typo. It will be waves, but <laughs> for the sake of this first box, it was a typo, but it's a rare misprint box. Uh, yeah. Roger will be able to it's not uh... rare. It's a lot of them, but <laughs> it'll have to oh, do. Okay. be able to sell it later for a million dollars or something. Who knows? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about environments. Yep. Everybody loves to end, and, and just a reminder for those of you that are uh, sticking around for the long term on this episode, we've got Unreal Engine up here, and Grant is gonna do a live demo. So it's not just gonna be images and videos, we're gonna see live uh, in it, Unreal Engine, current state of development here in a moment. But let's go through some stills that kind of showcase the work of the team before we get to that portion of the show. Really quick, we got some memes. But what if I capture a holographic in the private beta? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's so a sad cool. moment. It's a sad moment. <laughs> this is a good meme. This is good memes right here. Thank you, community. Did you know, in order to prepare for the role of an insane and mentally depressed person in the movie Joker, uh, 
Is it Joaquim Phoenix? If Joaquim is how you pronounce his first name. Spent two weeks yeah. grinding in Discord for whitelist. Crypto jokes, friends. Grant liked this. He shared it. He wanted you to see it for the memes. Perfect. Let's move into the next leak. Here we are, Crystal Shores. So what phase are we at here? With help me understand Crystal Shores. And uh, this is is this this is from the uh, third party we've been working with, correct? Uh, no, no, we've we've done. Emil has been blocking out Crystal Shores himself, and we're just doing overpaints right now. Ah, I see. This is the overpaint. Got it. Sorry, I've, uh, I've got some test evacuation thing blaring over the intercom. Test evacuation. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you have to okay. evacuate, let me know. Your safety is more important than this this leak. Even though the audience would disagree with that, you'd be seeing me get this, this rack of hard drives the hell out of here before my own. I'd be throwing it over the balcony. Some people get their kids. Some people grab the stuff in the safe. He just grabs the hard drives. So everybody's got their <laughs> no priorities. Me. <laughs> yeah, that's just, his uh, legacy right work. there on those hard drives. Got it. So this is the overpaint. Understood. With yeah, the crystal some of the shores. Work Alexis has been doing. Just got it. Uh, and we're seeing kind of this. What is this? Are we are we going to say what this effect is? Just that's fog, kind of right. Just like with fog, without fog, atmospherics and things like that. You know, we're, we're doing a lot of R&D at the moment with trying to make fog work real time. Like one of the annoying things with the game is it has to work on all computers. And notice how no one really complained about Alluvium not being able to run even on their low end PC. That's yes. because the team had just done a huge amount of optimization. I, uh, that's not me, right? Early on, I said, screw them, right? Let's just make the best graphically intensive game possible and pull in hardcore PC gamers. But it's, I mean, I don't have the say on everything in the game and I'm glad, I, I didn't think we'd be able to get the game looking as good as we did on such low end PCs, but it obviously does open up the window of our player base massively. Of and course. I'm glad, I'm glad we did do that, but it's just a nightmarish, hellish, amount of work to make a game like Alluvium run on a low end spec system. Because if you do fog, there are ways to make fog work on high end systems very easily. It's ray marshed, thick ray trace fog. And if you do low end systems, bad luck, you don't get fog, but we've got to make it work because there are elements to the pathing and things like that, that are all interconnected. So that's cool. Now you're going to show us maybe later, don't want to spoil it this in real time potentially but what are I we looking at right here now. you could yeah hey, it's up to you you can do whatever you want yeah let's do uh, it you're the leak boss uh oh, oh wow okay let's cut to real time here friends so this is grant screen sharing in so, real time what's the context here buddy cantamere so obviously when the private beta went out for the overworld you'll notice the main hub and it wasn't very detailed or and no texturing work whatsoever and obviously, like when you're like a tiny person at, you know, this scale, you you start to notice the lack of detail and all of the hard surface in our game had to be super clean and polished because there's not a lot of it. We've got the main hub, the Leviathan arena, the ascendant arena and the survival arena. And the main mm -hmm. hub is the survival arena right now. It's, it's not in that state, but the idea was that the main hub was the testing ground for the AI that's on the ship to like run like simulations of the battles so that the rangers can fight, you know, when they actually have to go do it out in the real world. And so this is like the news updated survival arena. And one of the coolest things about this arena is when I was doing the base design, Aaron wanted the ability to have skins around the arena, right? And on the interior of the arena right now, you've shown us in previous streams, mm -hmm. the exterior of this entire structure could be customized, yep. sort of like the colors of a beautiful Lamborghini, but you're saying the interior as well. Am I hearing you correctly? This, see how the, it's a full circle on the inside, right? Let yes. Me, let me just, let me just hide this, right? So if I go to change the, the preview mode, you can see that it's just a flat cylinder around the arena. Mm -hmm. That has a projection of different types of skins in what's called a cube map in Unreal Engine. So from our perspective right now, it just looks like a cylinder. But in the game, when you're in the arena here, 
right? That that ah. object will be mapped to things like a star field. It will be a region, right? It could be an artwork, right? Different skins that you unlock as collectibles so that I in see. survival arena, you're not seeing this as the background, like this sci-fi style. You're seeing a digital projection from Gaudi up the top onto that space. And so when you're playing survival and you're getting used to it and maybe you get sick of that background, you can swap the skin out. And it's just another at least just another thing in the game that people have to collect and grind for. Or Got unlock it. through competitions, giveaways, things like that. Just things that just add rarity and collectability to every element of the game. So basically what happens is when the right now, I mean this is still a work in progress, right? But you can see that you've got the survival battle board here this will be level with the water and this new arena will all be animated you get really cool lighting effects and things like that and that when you from the player's perspective come into the arena you can see that you've got the terminal which will unlock survival so instead of accessing survival through the main menu which you will still be able to do obviously we don't want to take away the ease of access to these regions, but there will also be the immersive component where if you want to get to survival, you can do it in the overworld, right? So there's no, I have to go to the menu to access this. Why can't I just be the ranger and run into the arena and activate and see how that cinematic kicks off from the player's perspective, right? So- Very like cool. Yeah. So just to walk everybody through who's not familiar in playing Arbados, you're gonna you take your ranger out into the o the o overworld, which is our open world experience. You'll run into this giant structure in the middle of Sanctum Mesa, which is sort of like the home base, sort of HQ, if you will, for you to be able to operate out of. And then this terminal here in the middle of this headquarters is essentially going to let you access the survival arena, where you get wave after wave after wave of adversarial alluvials coming at you and then you see how long you can survive and so now the the update here then is that you don't click inside of a menu to get into that experience it's mm -hmm. more immersive and it, that you can like physically go there essentially through the overworld as opposed to just clicking yep. a menu and it showing you some load bars and then you just show up in some random arena is that is that a fair summary that's a fair summary, but there's another detail that we've added that's coming and one of the feedbacks we got. So obviously we've, we've said from the start, right? We want the community, we want to listen to their feedback. And one of the most painful feedbacks we got from the overworld was that running to the locker storage and things like that manually got really tiring. So here on this platform, it's not done yet. There will be a bunch of rings around the outside that are color coded and they'll be teleporters, right? So if I want to go to the Ascendant Arena or the Leviathan Arena, there'll be like a little teleport platform here and I can literally just run through that. And so there's like the main central hub, right? Where you teleport to by clicking. But when you click and land here, like the, say Arlen pops up here, she'll be able to run to any one of those other regions and there'll be no load screen it will just whoop, you're just bang. Like it's like a window, like portal, right? If anyone's played the portal game to the Ascendant. So you'll be able to Fantastic. very quickly, if you want to get to the locker storage, there'll be like a little mini teleport here. There'll be one for your inventory and you can just very quickly bang, 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 and just run and just skip that gap. Of course, you will still be able to do that manually if you so chose, but of course the main hub was never there to force people to do that right because from a game design perspective that sucks after playing the game for hundreds of hours being uh, having to run literally from one spot to the next but on top of that we have a new lead game ui designer who's solving the locker storage and inventory management uis so that it all becomes unified and much more easy for the player to access and things in the overworld. So that was one of the biggest weaknesses in my eyes, the locker storage UI. It was very painful. It didn't look AAA, it kind of looked pretty shit house, to be honest. And that's all gonna be drastically overhauled and completely different by open beta. So that, that will be addressed. 
Could you Jimbo jump it though? Dick Kings wants to know in chat. In no, most people have no idea what that means, but anyway. So this is really cool. So we're reducing. So so when it comes to things like let's call it fast travel, we're making mm-hmm. fast travel even more frictionless yes. and even yes. faster. It's not yes. just a load screen. It's potentially yeah. a boot. You don't um, want to hit the menu button and then hover over a circle to teleport to different areas. You want to be able to just run bang, bang, bang. You know, if I if I say, for example, I'll, I'll explain how it works. I want to go to the inventory management, right? So I will teleport from the obelisk to here, right? Mm-hmm. By running from, you know, the obelisk in St. Demacius over here somewhere. I will come out of a region, run into the teleporter, bang, I pop back up at this central hub. I can then, through muscle memory, remember the direction I need to run from that point to get to the locker storage, and then bang, I'll pop up out of here, and I'll be straight there at the locker storage. If I want to get back to here, and then say the Ascendant, I run back through that teleporter, I spawn back through here, and then run through another one of the circles here, and pop up at the Ascendant arena. Totally frictionless, no time involved whatsoever. And hopefully the players appreciate that. The thing I love is that like, we've spent so much time, just it's so clean, you know, a lot of sci-fi and games, it's just overly detailed. It doesn't have a unique style. And we've tried to avoid that. We've tried to have that really eccentric, sharp, curvy, minimalist sci-fi style that will be remembered as that Alluvium style. And after this, Cantamere will be working on the Leviathan arena. So we are very close. All these things, like all the detail that we've got here, ETH canisters, right? The, these play into the law of the game. They'll, eventually, they'll be you'll be able to load and charge these up, which will assist with other things. I don't want to get into that because that's long stretch goals. But essentially, there's a lot planned for the utilization of this hub area in the game. Fantastic update. Thank you so much for that. And for those of you wondering, can I make this hub in a color that I want it to be? The answer is yes, uh, we're wanting to do that. Do you want to show this off now, Grant, or do you want to go through these other leaks? I mean, shoot, we might as well do it. If it's on the screen, we might as well do it. Well, I mean, what other leaks do we have? Maybe we do the other leaks. Uh, and then we'll- let me take a look through here and see if, the, I mean, there's, there's some environmental stuff and then a ton of rocks. Um, and some plants. Do we go on it. the rocks? We can show. Let's show off this in-game okay. pl- gameplay okay. here, and then we'll then we'll okay. we'll do the grand finale. Will be some incredible looking rocks. Alrighty. So, <laughs> Brightland steps right. PB two, private beta two of the overworld. What are people actually getting? They're getting two brand new regions: Abyssal Basin and Brightland Steps. And we are in the closing stages. So this won't look exactly like this for open beta right and just full disclosure it won't be at the same quality as crimson waste was for the first private beta but all of the functionality of the level will be there and we are very close to locking off the pathing and set dressing for the private beta once again that will change but in terms of the look and feel of the level we are getting there. This each region, remember, was meant to be vastly different. And you notice as I run through here, we've got little platforms. These aren't fully implemented yet, but things like this will be bubble platforms. You'll be able to stand on these platforms and then a bubble will grow around you and take you up high into the sky so that you don't have to manually traverse the region by right. using your jumper and and those systems, which can be really annoying because this level is uh, so vertical. You don't realize yeah. how big it is. Like, let me let me spawn in here. Yeah. So every uh, every region, just so you guys know, Grant has said this on previous episodes, will have a unique traversal mechanic mm-hmm. that's unique just to that region. And it obviously is tied into the design of the region, and it's specifically designed, obviously, to help you traverse that particular region. So the current, like you mentioned earlier, the current private beta is in Crimson Waste is the region. And in yes. case you missed it a moment ago, we're aiming for upcoming beta of Overworld to incorporate two additional regions uh, mm-hmm. into that beta experience. This is one of them currently in development. He's showing you Unreal Engine right now. The idea being that each region has different spawn rates for certain characters. 
So it forces the player, if they're looking to complete the entire deck, to be able to... Let me just... It's going to take a little second here to field the view. Uh, field the view overworld. How many video games friends that are watching right now did you get to see the actual in-development build of the game you're going to be playing and experiencing before it came out? Like, never. You maybe saw a two-minute trailer of some hand-picked clips. You're seeing the co-founder of this game studio, this decentralized autonomous organization, showing you what's being built in real time right now on the screen. Just give me a second. This region is so beautiful. It just... so lush. It's so green. The pink is just... So iconic and interesting. You're seeing I'm, I'm streaming from a dev build, so it's going to do a, a few loading things when I make changes. But I mean, pretty damn cool, right? Like, it, it to me, it looks even better than the trailer. The level in the trailer was a, you know, hacked together kind of style. Mm -hmm. But now we've refined it and you can see just how big it is, right? It's not as big from left to right, but like even the wind in the grass now is being implemented. Ignis, Max, the the tech team are all doing their thing. The waterfalls coming together. Wow, hey. It's looking so good. I'm sorry. It's just breathtaking for me right now. The scale of the sort of rock formations with the waterfalls just dropping down into nowhere. It's so, uh, I don't know, fantasy or fantastical. Uh, and <laughs> it's just, it's so cool. It gives you the the way the waterfalls drop into kind of no, nothing or nowhere. It makes it feel endless. That's a cool feeling. So still work in progress, but as you can tell, like Crimson Waste has a very set look and feel and you get bored of it if you keep playing the game too long. Now, the other thing we've got coming up is the new movement mechanics, the gliding and the sliding. So we're currently cleaning up the level to work with sliding and you'll see in a second what i'm talking about like with here if you get to the top the idea of this level just so you're aware is to get onto those bubble platforms which obviously aren't you can see see them spawning up there yes these are not implemented properly right they're meant to be on a spline system where they and they have wind attached to them and stuff like that so they're what is a spline way. system for people that are not familiar well right now they're going directly vertical and they're not following any set path or trajectory. The idea would be that you'd be able to get on a bubble platform and it would like take you up the side of the hill here so you don't have to run up it like I'm doing. But the idea of this level was that use the bubbles to get to the top of the level and then use the new gliding mechanic and sliding mechanic to get to the bottom. So you'll be able to like hold shift or whatever on, on these declines and like slide down to move quickly. Now, another thing that I don't want to share too much of in upcoming in the open beta, you're going to need to be quick, right? Is so the sliding, does that have anything to do with the energy board or no? Uh, it does. Yeah, yeah. You, But it's if you're on a vertical, you'll, you'll be able well, to Well, let me just show that. This was a sneak preview of a leak I was going to, we're going to talk about next week. But this is just a trail effects iteration on an energy board. We don't, I know we're not saying too much about this, but as you can see, this ranger is using an energy mm -hmm. board and sliding down a hill. Now, could you possibly imagine being on an energy board and sliding down in this ultimate skate park right here? Uh, it's, it's, it's getting there, right? There's no, right now we're just working on where to place the containers procedurally, things like the plants, harvestables, and wakes, right? There's no wakes in this region yet because I'm just showing you like an environment dev build. But I'm really, I'm super proud of what the team's been able to do on this level. It's it's a massive level when you factor in all the verticality of it. Like Crimson Waste, you when you've got all the jumping systems in place, you can very quickly just skid from one area to the next. In this region, right, the doesn't matter if you've got the Jimbo jump or not, you've got to use the bubbles to get to the top and the idea being like you know you'll eventually let me just run over to one of these bubble platforms here very cool uh, once again everything we're talking about from the energy board which was just a concept sketch to this region development keep in mind this is a very creative and fluid process 
If stuff works and it makes sense, then it gets into the game. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. So we're just, this is part of the, I guess, risk of showing in development builds of things is that we might show you something that might not make it in the game or it might be different, but we're taking that risk because we do things differently around here. So this is this is the new traverse. So help help me understand what 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 will kind of the final version of this traversal mechanic look like in comparison to to what we're seeing right now. So instead of me just standing here and nothing happening, <laughs> a bubble <laughs> will form around you okay, and say okay. take you up to the top of each of these platforms, mm -hmm. and then you'll be able to use the gliding system that we've implemented to like similar to the game Anthem, fly down the region to mine things faster, right? So you'll go top to bottom, basically. The idea of the level wasn't to manually jump up the top because it's annoying. As you can see, the ranger can't jump very high. So yep. getting all the way up there is super annoying, but you know, the, the gliding and the sliding was so cool, you know, like Tarzaning down these vines and stuff like that. Yep. I, I it's going to be cool. I, I don't know if I ever Anthem. told you, I was the top live streamer for Anthem in the world when that game came out. I was obsessed really? with it. And my favorite um, mechanic in uh, in Anthem was just the initial moment where you jumped off the platform and then you could just kind of dive bomb into the open world. That feeling, and they had waterfalls and, and, and verticality like this, that feeling is unforgettable. So the fact that, that that sort of feeling and that sort of mechanic is baked into this region where you can basically take the ski lift, if you will, with those bubbles, go up to the top, and then get that feeling over and over again as you're traversing this region is just fucking fantastic. Like, I'm really looking <laughs> forward to that. Yeah, it's it's cool, man. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, can't go through the waterfall. But it's work in progress, right? Like, over the next two to three weeks, we will see some you know, drastic changes and I'll get Mark on to one of the streams and he can run you through just the scope of what the team has been doing. But it's super cool. You know, it's it's a big region. It's not as big as Crimson, but when you factor in getting to the tops of everywhere to mine things, it is as big. So it's different. I mean, you want it to be different. Like if this was yet another underground traversal region, blah, 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 mm -hmm. we'd all feel samey. This feels so much different than the region people are currently testing in the overworld really Alrighty, really so interesting do we show abyssal basin then uh hey that's up to you man if you look i'm not going to stop the leak fast audience do you want to see abyssal basin or do you want to just go ahead and not see any more leaks let us know <laughs> let uh, us know the answer to that leading question in chat here i'll, I'll let you load up whatever you want to load up buddy and, and give you a chance look to the, look do at that. the scale oh I'll, i'm sorry i'll cut back sorry about that that's, that's the entire level so cool can we so get that cool, can we get that 3d print printed with like little action figures and i can move my little ranger around on there <laughs> jeez okay okay it looks like basin. chat it looks like chat wants the leaks they want to see abyssal basin yeah did you guys like that leak that uh grant put together um he he basically sent me over some footage he's like yeah uh can you show this to everybody of abyssal basin so I just did a cut down of some cinematic shots that Grant sent over to me, and you guys seem to really enjoy it. Abyssal Basin is so unique. Um, and before we load into it, it's sort of the swampy, almost barren, toxic feeling region. Um, but it has, uh, but it's teeming with life in certain areas, and it has bioluminescence to pop off of the um, almost desolate feeling swamp. And it's just such a unique region contrasting so much with uh, Brightland Steps that we just saw, which is just lush grass, looks like something out of Legend of Zelda, and then Bright Abyssal Basin looks like this. This is, I think, the world's first look anyone's ever seeing of Abyssal Basin kind of moving about in real time. Grant, walk us through the... God, ooh, this has improved since the footage you sent me, buddy. Yeah, it has. It has. What? The team's gone, the team's gone crazy. Right, so... I better put on the Abyssal Basin music you sent me then. Here, let me let me stop playing this track. I'm going to crank that one up. Here, this is some Abyssal Basin music Grant sent over to me for the stream here. No ray tracing. So this is performant. 
right? We're currently in the process of making it run without ray tracing. We've swapped to Unreal Engine 5.1. One of the really, really annoying things about Unreal Engine 5 was it reflection captures weren't working with baked lighting. And so water, you notice like all the acid water in Crimson Way sucked. It looked shit. And now that's been improved and this is still work in progress. But like what a cool region, just totally different from Crimson. Still the Alluvium style. Vanya is going absolutely cracked out, insane set dressing all of this so different Looks you're blowing everybody's minds right streaming. now grant just keep showing it that they that they, they want to see it <laughs> the depth we're getting now with certain areas wow look at that the um I just love how they, you know, this this could be a region. So many games have regions that have like brown and tan color palettes that are just super natural, or not super natural, but like mm. that are just very natural and almost blandly natural. This region with the underlighting, the lighting under the shrooms, the purpley pinkish alluvium signature color bioluminescence, and sort of fantastical magic that glows and contrasts with the environment makes this just like a work of art it, it looks it looks and so good it's work in progress right you're not seeing final details like right now you notice like around the water lines and stuff like that there's not a lot of detail here remember all of those mm -hmm. earlier in the showcase the vines the hanging stuff like this right this type of detail right now this is part of this asset but eventually it will be hanging off stuff right we'll have reeds in the water Right, so it won't just be like just completely empty. Like near the shoreline, there'll be a whole bunch of plants scattered around. Like it's assets we're showing like, you work in progress, but just the, I was trying to show the assets and I screwed it up. But oh uh, yeah, yeah, assets like these vines is what he's referring to. Stuff like this, which will help mask the say the transition, like you were saying. Correct me if I'm wrong. The transition from the water to the roots of a plant mm -hmm. or something by having some vines or having these extra details there, it makes it look more immersive. All right, here's a perfect example of where Banya is actually going in and doing that stuff. Oh my so gosh. Those assets you just showed are here, right? Now they're not fully implemented properly, like in terms of shaders finalized, but you can see it just adds that level of life to these mushrooms. Like now they feel set in and all of those need to be added to things like the rock cliffs and stuff like that. This it's is the this cool is the coolest looking area in Abyssal Basin I've seen so far. These shrooms with this green and uh, orangish color scheme here are amazing. Then you have the blue as well. Mm. Like the more variety there is in color of this sort of bioluminescence or whatever we want to call it here, the more um, the region feels special. This is just really, really interesting to see this sort of upgrade since the last Abyssal Basin footage. Seven different regions, all vastly different. Some just test VFX here, right? Like you're seeing work in progress, obviously, but these are just like little tests, you know, so that they're bringing life into the regions. The other thing, too, is the lily pads, right? So the player cannot get to certain areas in this region without using that lily pad for traversal. Well, not easily, anyway. Maybe people will, like Jimbo will find a freaking workaround to it. But the idea is, is that like, say if we come over here, we just go lower because it feels like we're going faster. I've slowed it down. I'm using my controller to navigate through the region. Yeah, he's got the cheat codes, obviously, so he can go ah, through look stuff. At that. It's like being in the King Kong world, right? So wow. to get down here right now, you're not seeing the lily pad spawn because I'm not running the game, but you will have to jump and piggy hop the lily pads to get two areas because like I'll show you there's work in progress happening Let's just go lower. lighting's not final obviously that's not, like you notice it's getting very dark here this area hasn't been lit properly it may break just so you know where we are all of these areas need to be lit then you've got this whole underground cavern here. 
Wow, the the way the light is cascading through the mm. open parts in the ceiling, just highlighting this random plant. It just it's so ominous. It feels uh, like ancient. It almost feels like ancient ruins in here. That's what it's meant to. So come back out of the waterfalls. See the lily pads here. I gotta right turn the. There. I'm gonna gotta turn this frame effect off. It is killing the footage. There we go. So cool. When flashlight for Ranger too. wants to know Ramza. <laughs> we need a flashlight. <laughs> it's not the the region's not lit properly yet, by the way. But I mean, look at that. It's just so unique. Wow, I I can't, I can't believe what we're doing sometimes. You know, like the ambition and scope to be able to do seven totally different regions with different art direction, look look dev, lighting, assets. Each region has completely different assets from the next. We didn't just say, hey, let's just fill seven regions out with all the same stuff. Basically 99% of every asset in each region is tailored for that region. People are freaking out, Grant. What did you do? What did you do? We're doing it. I don't know what people thought, but we're doing it. It's, I well, mean, I, I mean, can, people I, thought me, the trailer we shared was, uh, you know, any they, they said anyone can just pay for a trailer to look like that. Uh, and and now, now you guys are seeing the actual regions, the actual gameplay, the actual places that were featured in the trailers. You can traverse them and people will be playing them. So seeing is believing, my friends. Yeah, I think Kira will live to eat those words. I'm just spawning into the region now. Cool. Oh, okay. So we can see the ranger traversing about. Yeah. Once just, again, just everybody just so who's just tuning this. in, this is work in progress. This is, you know, he's in Unreal Engine. It's development build. So if you're seeing some glitches and stuff, it's just literally what's being developed at the moment. Because it's a dev build, every time I spawn in, it has to generate shaders and stuff like that. So it's a mm -hmm. bit glitchy like this it's not compiled basically so it'll speed up in a second yeah no problem i think everybody understands yeah, they're, they're, we're just kind of getting yeah. a first we're getting like a second look at this region are you getting the music coming through from this i i'm playing music right now the the abyssal basin music you sent me so but is, is it that, are you picking up sound from the game because the game has the music and stuff running oh really uh let me check yeah. that no it's not coming through so it must be like a screen the the audio sharing setting it doesn't appear to be pumping that audio through for me so I, i've go. been manually adding a soundtrack to the footage if it comes through though i'll, I'll be able to hear it on my my headphones if not, it's okay. We literally have the soundtrack from this region playing. It should be coming through now. Let me check it. No, it's not coming through for me. Um, okay, we'll, damn. We'll just, we'll okay. just double check that for the next stream. Yeah, all good. But you can see the lily pads and stuff like that. Very cool. So these are these... Okay. Yeah, I remember in a previous showcase, you were showing lily pads that maybe had some physics so when you jumped on them yep. maybe they would move about and would react and rock yep. as you jump on them to make it more realistic lily pad travel very cool so we're getting there right we are we are getting there so these two regions will add to the crimson waste loop and i think it's going to you know, people are going to start to feel the, the the depth of the game. And you get bored of one region, cool. Tomorrow I'm going to play another region and hope I can get different characters in those regions. And then as, the, as we go into open beta with these three regions, we're preparing the other regions, which I'll quickly show you where they're at. And like, for example, I'll show you the block out for Shard Bluff. Cool. I'll let you load that up. If you guys are enjoying the stream, please retweet on Twitter this stream so other people can see the incredible work our uh, the team is doing and this project is uh, creating. And then be sure to like the stream on YouTube 
as well. Okay, loading in here. All right, we had other leaks, Grant, but we're just getting so sidetracked with the best leaks ever. I love it when you do live demos, man. These are always the best. Here, let's cut, let's cut into some more live footage from Grant. So this is the block out of Shard Bluff, right? You want to know the scale, right? We're, we're in the process right now of locking off all the last remaining assets for this region. And so when the team finishes up on Abyssal Basin and Brightland Steps, we start working on the other regions and the scale of this region is just psychotic, right? And this region is gonna be one of the last we release, but incorporates all of the best movement systems. We've got trampoline plants, right? So you'll be able to jump. You'll notice these little square things here, they launch you up through the level and then you'll be able to on the way down glide down right so when you get to the top it's like very lord of the ringsy mordor inspired it does feel that way Look, I mean, so i'm, so I'm, I'm sorry help, so help me understand you. one more time the unique traversal mechanic what exactly is it that's kind of propelling the you trampolines upwards? see mm -hmm. all these square platforms mm -hmm. you know what better to just show you now, obviously, they're just squares right now, guys. This one is obviously earlier in development. This is a block out, yeah. Block out is the phase. Yeah, this is mm -hmm. a block out. The idea being, though, that the region's so big, so how do we make it feel smaller? Well, you have to be able to traverse through it faster. And the only way to do that is to supplement the movement mechanics with something that just launches you through. So this this is super cool. You'll... Very cool. But we don't have gliding yet or the grappling hook, so... Or sliding. Yes, Come you guys load. heard the words grappling hook and sliding, energy board, all of that. You heard all, you heard all of that on the stream. You were not imagining it. The overworld will become fun. I don't want to leak one of the gameplay mechanics we have in store for open beta for the overworld. But put it this way. If anyone's playing the private beta, make sure you get good at doing things quickly. Because... At some point in the game, speed is going to matter a lot. Awesome. So basically, the lava is going to come up on the ground or... Well, I'm just kidding. Um, all right. Come on, it's just loading. It's all good. You know what? I'm going to show a couple leaks while we're waiting yeah, for that to load. Yeah, uh, let's so do that. Let's get back to the Here's some leaks. environmental leaks um, with some what looks like corresponding icons uh, for, yeah, collecti well, for collectible goods. Remember I was saying on one of the previous showcases that every single NFT will have that same love and attention put into it as the character NFTs did. So mm -hmm. we're in the process right now. Any UI element in the game that is an NFT that you trade in our universe will be rendered in 4K in V-Ray by Dimitri and I so that the consistency is there it will be animated. You'll get a slight back and forth rotation. And that means taking it from these 2D artworks to full 3D. And it also means that in future games, if we want to tie in some of these elements as actual assets, we've got them there in 3D, right? So it's future proofing ourselves as well, because what if these little berries or something like that are utilized in a totally different game and they can't just be 2D artwork. So we're front loading all of that work. Preparing for the future, preparing for that 10 year timeline, that, uh, that franchise building. This is franchise building guys. This is not just putting out some cheap web three knockoff crypto game and then hoping it, it, uh, pops off on Twitter for a day. This is building a game universe, a intellectual property that can last for decades. Just showing off some of these. I love this icon art here, by the way. It's beautiful. I love it. At a glance, that's actually... I know this is just some random art, but it looks beautiful. Uh, well, the way the fire particles are coming off of it and everything, it looks looks really nice. Yeah, all those particles will be 3D. Done in tie flow in 3ds Max. And it's a lot of work. You know, we got a lot on our plate. But as soon as we finish the NFT artwork, things like that, right? We can go to open beta with not having every single NFT finished, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, who cares, right? Like, it's not about the artwork for that stuff. The characters, it's about the artwork. But 
not, we're not going to get every NFT finished, but those will be updated. And that's the beautiful thing about the NFT side that not many people are aware of. Most people think that the NFT is final, but it does allow for updates. And that will be part of the disclaimer by joining our game in open beta. You know, until we're out of open beta, the disclaimer is, is that the NFTs that you own can be changed or improved. And hopefully that gets passed by council. We'll probably run through and just do like, a, are we cool with this being updated or whatever? And the council approves that process so that we're not just like randomly changing the NFTs on people. Makes sense. Yeah. So th for those of you that are not familiar with the project, Grant doesn't call all the shots. His brothers, Kieran and Aaron, don't call all the shots. The council calls the shots and they're democratically elected. Uh, and it's, it's a whole new process to make decisions about building an intellectual property in a game universe to have random people get elected and make big decisions about this project. But we're doing it. We don't do things in a conventional manner. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just showing more environmental assets uh, yeah. that all those little details, guys, all of these details go into creating those more polished looks and experiences like you saw a moment ago in Abyssal Basin. I'm almost done showing these. And then if you'd like, we can cut to your screen share and then we can mm -hmm. end the episode by showing really just the plethora of rocks that you sent over to me. I mean, it was dumb. This is the geyser room, by the way, a unique traversal mechanic that uh, is going to be unique to this particular region. Mm -hmm. And this geyser is going to shoot you upward. That's been demoed in a previous showcase. Just a beautiful looking artwork uh, for that geyser room. And then even more assets. Right, Grant? Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, once upon a time, all the showcase was basically was sharing environment assets like plants and stuff like that. And now it's transitioning towards like final NFTs and full regions being developed. You, you warned me, you said, look, in 2023, you told me, mm -hmm. I'm going to have actual stuff to show you on the show, Andrew. Just get ready. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, whatever, Grant. You're always hyped about whatever. You're right. It's all coming together. It's all becoming real. It's all becoming an experience that you can show on the screen and that people are now testing in our betas. And that's exciting. Okay, we won't reveal the rocks. All right, if, if you're cool with it, let's go ahead and... Yeah show screen share here so what region are we what region are we looking at here and what is shot this bluff. square shot bluff shot bluff labyrinth lockout right so these will eventually be trampoline plants you know with physics and stuff pretty crazy very good i've turned the sound down and then you'll obviously be gliding right now she's falling but you'll be gliding through the level and very so if cool. You, if you want to get back up, right, it's like very tricky to, it's impossible to jump up here. I can't so you, so you basically have to use these unique traversal yeah, mechanics. Absolutely. It's too tall. Got it. Re this region is just too big, right? How do you get up there manually? We have not so, shown the gliding mechanic, correct? Not, yes, no, no. Right. So that's absolutely. coming, yeah, guys. Yeah. Yeah, like even this right now, like using the jetpack wouldn't be as efficient for something like this. I mean, yeah, the, the level's so gigantic. I mean, you just have to, you need something. You need some way to get up high and then let gravity take its course and bring you down low as you're collecting everything in, in this particular region and doing your run. And as you mentioned earlier, it's all about efficiency when you're clearing, doing these overworld runs. And so finding the most efficient path to use this traversal mechanic to clear the level is going to be the secret, is going to be the difference between you just being some average Illuvium player and the ones that are going to be toward the top of the leaderboards. Very cool. That looks so yeah. fun. I mean, I know this is early yeah. <laughs> in terms of the build out here, but it looks just fun to go boing <laughs> and yeah, to have no, some fun, you know? It's getting there. Uh, I believe this... If there's like some award in mainstream about like level of the year, this will be a contender for it in its final state. Or the thing I'm excited about is like, we've got all the regions blocked out now, but on top of that 95 to 
100% of all the assets for each region are done. And so we're no longer using any outsourcing at Alluvium for things like environment art. Onyx just finished up with us on Tiger Boreal, right? So now we're all in-house at Alluvium and looking forward to getting the rest of these regions in a playable state for private beta. So obviously when we go to open beta, there will still need to be private betas for the upcoming regions. You know, instead of sending it out to everyone, we'll just do play testing, make sure it goes through the QA process. And obviously Aaron implemented the law mechanic where players themselves would be able to unlock the next region, right? And we haven't explained how people will do that, but it will be up to the community to unlock the next region once we're ready to go with it. So our goal internally is to start with the three regions and then have a drip feed process. How long that takes, it's, it's hard to say right now, but obviously the goal is to not make people wait too long, you know, like maybe they wait three, four months or whatever, and another region comes out. Three, four months, another region comes out so that you're allowing the player base to, it's almost like a DLC. And once again, don't take those numbers for face value or anything like that, because it can change. We may have some regions ready sooner, some regions ready later, but that's the general idea, right? Players will be able to come into those three main regions and then as the other regions unlock, those other rarer characters start becoming more prominent because the regions are now unlocked. Eventually when all regions are unlocked and the bonding curves for all alluvials start to drop, we start implementing batch two or wave two of the next set of alluvials. And we will also continue working on different regions in our game. So that gets us out of open beta. So I'm, I'm really, really excited to see where the rest of the environment stuff goes. Cause now we have a very well oiled environment team and things are happening really quickly and efficiently and the artwork is looking really great. So it's coming along. So maybe so I'll pen, show pen, the pending, pending council approval, of course, but mm -hmm. you know, as each of these regions are rolled out, the idea, I guess I'll, I'll use some air quotes here. You know, it would be, uh, let's call it a free DLC, if you will. So this is not, we're not going to sell you each of these regions mm -hmm. as a, uh, you know, $20 bundle to get access. Uh, some, some people were asking earlier, is Alluvium free to play? You'll be able to experience all of these regions for free, but obviously to get, you know, certain, uh, certain levels of alluvials and access to certain uh, items that may be tradable on the Alluvadex for, for monetary value, then there's going to be a, a financial component there. All right. So I know you want to show something else here in these regions. Uh, another, oh, hold on a second. A battle is that a battle, board. Is that a battle board? Yeah. So Emil has been Grant. updating. The, All right. We got we got to put this on the screen. What kind of battle board are we looking at here, bro? The Brightland Steps battle board. Now this is work in progress as always, but coming along, right? All the vines right now will be swapped out. You can see they're just placeholder. They look shit house. They're going to be swapped. But the scale of, and this is where in Brightland Steps, you'll be battling for Brightland Steps characters. So pretty cool. Just I, I love the gold that. color of the, I know it's just a color, but the gold color of the battle board, it looks premium. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe I'll show the Abyssal Basin battle board. It's been a while since we showed that. Yeah, I think you showed it a while back and mm, you blew everybody's yeah. socks off at the end of a showcase episode because it was their first time seeing anything that even resembled Abyssal Basin kind of finished mm -hmm. look. Yeah. But uh, this is going to be, I'm curious to see what the progression is like on this and see how, see how it's come along. Cool. While Grant is loading that, why don't we show everybody's favorite assets on the screen? And that is the asset known as rocks, my friends. We just wanted to show you some rocks while he's loading this up. Oh yeah, we're gonna finish with that Abyssal Base and Battleboard. I'm looking at it right now. But this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Here are some rocks. <laughs> so the beta will be out in a few days. What last things do we need to polish? Optimization, bugs, what about the rocks? Now in this meme, he gets thrown out the window, but 
<laughs> not at Alluvium. He actually gets promoted or maybe even as co-founder. <laughs> the art director. <laughs> <laughs> He's the art director. <laughs> I love it. Look at these rocks, my friends. Going from complex to simple design, not easy. Come on, let's see some love and chat for some rocks. Here's some before and afters. So the idea here with these rocks, correct me if I'm wrong, is to just reduce the poly count or the complexity so that they don't eat up as much system resources. Help me understand that. No, it's just showing the polished high-res sculpt versus the oh, low-res okay. in-game geometry. I see. Okay. There you go. I did not understand. Yeah. These are icons. Look at these rocks. Have you ever seen rocks so premium as these? Yeah, Lorette has been going sicko mode on all of these. These are all of the mineable deposits. And once again, those will be NFTs. When you go into our game and you mine a deposit, that NFT will be in your wallet. And you want that NFT to be high quality, 4K, animated, just like everything else. So that Have you, you ever like, seen like, a game it. development house so obsessed with freaking rocks here, guys. Look at the, I, I mean, this is next level rockage. <laughs> Grant, is it your, is it, is it your fault? These rocks look like that we're so obsessed with them. I mean, this rock right here looks really awesome. These are some of the best looking rocks we've ever shown on the show. I'm, I'm gonna say this is probably the most S tier rocks we've ever <laughs> shown off. Uh. <laughs> Can we get some of these well, 3D printed? These are the valuable ones, right? Like these are things mm -hmm. that hold value in the game. You'll be able to sell these on our marketplace. So it's it's not just a UI icon. It's an asset that you own. And just like an energy card in Pokemon, you want these to feel premium. And so we've gone all out, right? Like I can't wait. That's I'll, a really I'll, good what I'll comparison. Do, yeah. What I'll do is in maybe after next week's showcase, Mm -hmm. I'll get on a live stream rendering these out in V-Ray and show people how we take them from these assets to fully rendered, animated, you know, final assets in game. That would be like, honestly, that would be like act three of our rocks story arc that we've been creating <laughs> through these showcase episodes. You saw like drawings of what the rocks might look like early modeling of the rocks. You're seeing these more uh, further down the road development versions of them. Then they get rendered as beautiful, beautiful assets that you're asking yourself, I've never cared about rocks before, but now I love them. Rock plushies. <laughs> I'm just saying, look at these effing <laughs> rocks, man. There's there, these, these rocks are legitimately impressive. I'm, I, I'm taking a moment to zoom in on them because they're actually really, really beautifully designed rocks. Mm. Like a lot of the time the rocks look pretty bland, bland, right? It's like literally just a brown <laughs> rock. But these, because they have coloring and they have these interesting variety and <laughs> textures, they actually look really nice. Living under an alluvium rock would be a compliment. <laughs> uh. Oopsie. Wrong scene. Sorry, the rocks broke my break for a minute. I'm back though. <laughs> no. And look, look. I mean, you yeah. want to look at all these rocks on the screen. I think this is an image just labeled <laughs> "All Rocks." This is all rocks. Maybe this should be its own NFT collection. <laughs> just the rocks. <laughs> no rocks. And rocks are pretty overpowered. Here, I'll, oh, I'll you got a some... trailer for next week. I have I have some leaks on what we're gonna show. I'll, I'll just do this real quick, and then we'll do the um, cool. and then we'll do the uh, abyssal basin. So next week, cool. I already showed this off earlier. I thought this was a cool reveal. Actually, we talked about it a moment ago. Energy board. I think this is the first time anyone's seeing a mock up of a concept of an energy board in Alluvium. So need to slide down a hill. You could do it on your butt, or you could bust out an effing energy board in the Alluvium world. I love it so much. Very good. We have tons of these. These are, e is this an emote? Is that Emotes. correct? Yeah. Yeah. More and collectibles. Obviously what's in their hand is 
a piece of candy. Uh, but we have tons of emotes to show next week. <laughs> like 30 of them that Grant sent over to me. These are part of the assets I uh, cut out of this episode to show you next week because there's so many of these beautiful works of art. I really wanted them to have their own time in their own episode. And then what are these morpho pods? Don't say anything, Grant. We'll talk about it next episode, anything. but there's lots, earth, water, fire. What is a morpho pod? Why do all yeah. these varieties of them exist? Next episode, my friends. Doodle doo, doodle doo, doodle doo. All right, that's next week on Showcase. We're here in Abyssal Basin to show off this battle board. Help us understand how it's progressed since the last time you showed us this battle board during Showcase. Well, I don't need to say anything. I just show it around. <laughs> so cool. Maybe I did. Did I show this updated version? You have not showed this updated version to anybody. That's why I was at, I mean, we can try to eyeball it, but it, it's really nice to get context from you on like what specific type of work has been done since just, just, just in, in the near I've recent maybe past. Shown it. Maybe I've shown it. Just Vanya had just completely overhauled it and opened it up. Yeah, I, I think I did. Cause I was talking about the way the encounter dome has to come down around the board. But yeah, so we've got for the next private beta, the battle board's in a workable state. The region's very close to being in a workable state. We're locking off our work as an environment team on the regions in two weeks' time, give up, you know, short of any catastrophes. And then it goes through the QA process, getting them ready for Private Beta 2. So we've got a lot to do in the next two weeks, but Private Beta 2 is coming soon and players will be able to start testing, you know, like ASAP, the three regions together and you know then we're getting very close to what we said would be out in open beta right so obviously after the private beta we gain feedback on how performance is going that's the number one thing right if people can't run it who cares how the game is second to that are the levels playing well are they boring are things not making sense to players and we fix all of that for open beta, which hopefully comes soon. But yeah, I think it was a great showcase. I'm a little I bit- I agree, I agree. I, th this was an amazing showcase. We have this much to show you, actually more in terms of leaks for next week. I love the zoom outs, man, give it to me. And I agree with the comment in chat. You can feel the humidity. Uh, whoa, how come the world is stretched? We just go multi-dimensional there? You, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that's tripping me out. <laughs> Dude, that's that's crazy. Is that like on tons of drugs mode or something? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, it's just like uh, camera settings with the controller. Okay, oh, got it. Cool. That's awesome. Honestly, Grant, we really appreciate you compiling all of this. And I know that this is the hard work of the team. Uh, and it's, it's so cool to be able to show their work in real time and to be able to show the progress on all of these regions. Grant, I'm glad our show is back, buddy. I missed talking yeah. about all this cool stuff with you. Yeah. Let's do it all again next week. Easy. Well, we can share the hollows and dark hollows. I can't believe they didn't make it in this week, but it's all good. We'll hype it up next week. We will, those dark hollows. We won't tell you what yeah. they're all about. Don't. We gotta save it for our next lore, lore award. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, I had to make fun of it. That's the last time I'll make fun of our Laura Award. I just had to do it in front of Grant. Uh, just to just to uh, talk about the absurdity of our industry right now. But Grant, thank you so much for joining me on this Alluvium Showcase. I'll see you next week. Adios, amigo. And we've got another 100 leaks we're going to go over next week. We'll see you then. And Grant left us with a... Adios, dude. And Grant left us with a piece of music that I wanted to play full volume for you guys. So you guys stick around and listen to this. This is original soundtrack Grant uh, sh is sharing with us from the sound team, soundtrack team uh, for Abyssal Basin. You heard a little bit of it, of it in the background earlier, but I'm going to play it full volume for you to enjoy while I do a nice looping animation. Listen to Abyssal Basin music. This is going to be paired up with that swampy, desolate, yet incredible bioluminescent experience we showed you a moment ago. Thank you for watching Alluvium Showcase. We'll see you in the next one. There you are up there. We'll see you in the next one next week right here on our social media. Here it is, enjoy the music.